Hello everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage. Today we're going to do a sprig of witch hazel. It's watercolor Wednesday and let me just get this out of the way. What's happening? Hold on. Whoops. <laughs> all right, as you can see, I'm still learning how to use all my controls. So welcome to Dandelion Cottage. And we have uh, witch hazel in bloom now. So I'm very excited to see this because it really means that spring is almost here. So I have a little sprig um, that I'm going to be painting from today. And um, I just want to remind you, if uh, if you're interested, I have a class coming up on March 21st. We're going to be celebrating spring, and I will be showing some previews of some of the projects we're going to be making on that day. So stay tuned for that. And also, uh, I'll be back again at 12 noon on Saturday for Paper Crafting Saturday. So let's, uh, let's turn you down so you can see the um, desk, and I'll get started. So here's, so witch hazel is such an interesting plant. This is a, this is a wonderful medicinal plant. Can you, let me see if I can get that in focus. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? And some, some varieties bloom in the winter. This is the, the one that I have in my yard. And, um, a friend of mine has been busy all winter cutting and, and chipping it for the Witch Hazel um, Lotion Company. So, um, so it's a it's a valuable plant. So, as I have in the past, I'm simply going to draw a simple shape, lightly in pencil. There we go. And I'm just going to map out the areas where I want these wild blossoms to be. And uh, remember, when you're working from a live specimen, now if you were doing botanical illustration for uh, scientific purposes, of course you'd be measuring and getting, getting the uh, drawing as exact to the subject as possible. But in this case, we're designing. And I like to use things like this as inspiration to create pretty designs that I can then use in other applications. So um, in this case, I'll probably turn this into a little note card. So uh, there's the pencil. Okay. And you know, while I'm thinking about it, let me, I noticed in my last video that the, hold on a second while I put this on my phone and see if this makes it, a, yeah. I noticed in, in my last video that there was a little bit of a, a blue tinge and that's because it was a very uh, bright sunny day and the, the blue sky was reflecting off my surface, making it look a little cool. So let's see, let's see if this uh, will make the light look a little more natural. Okay, we'll give that a try. All right. I'm just going to take a, um, a very pale yellow wash and begin to indicate some of these areas where the blossoms are going to be in a very light color like so okay and this is this is just a kind of an underpainting so I'm not concerned about um, getting all these little fronds established I just I'm just 
working on the uh, places where I want the yellow to be. And now I'm taking kind of a brownish tone, still keeping it very light. And I'm just going to begin to, actually I'm gonna add a little green to this mixture because the uh, spring green is really showing up in the, um, in the branch here. So let me adjust that a little bit. There we go. We'll continue to work on that as we go along, but that that gives us the basic framework for our blossoms. And then there's also um, at the base of the cluster of petals, there's a little texture that I want to capture. So when I say texture, I'm really talking about um, just, uh, how do I describe that? The difference between rough and smooth. It's not that I'm necessarily talking about the um, actual area that I'm, that I'm looking at. So here, here's a close up and you can see all of the interesting places in here that support the petals. And you can see they almost have like a little peachy tone to them. Very beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? It's so exciting to see these things waking up after winter. All right, so let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little peachy a red and a, a yellow mixture into those areas just to get that set up. There we go. I'll hold that up so you can, well, let me, actually, let me try the zoom feature and see if this will help you. It's a little better. There. Okay. So, um, I would call that my, my uh, light wash or underpainting completed. And now I'm just going to go in with a, a little uh, slightly darker tone and just indicating where the where the darker areas are, the shadow areas. And for any of you who are painting along, I'd love to see what you're doing. So I hope you, you'll post a picture below and, um, and maybe we'll, uh, we'll have a nice little group, support group that we can help one another as we progress. Okay, so while I'm still working on the, the stem, I'm gonna put a couple of, uh, just a little uh, accent and drawing lines. So um, there are these little ridges that I'm noticing here and there. Okay, now going back to the blossoms, I'm taking a um, darker mixture of yellow. Let me just check the... I forgot to see if you were online here. Let me make sure you're seeing what I see. Yes, 
Yes. Okay. All right, good. Um, so now going uh, to the base of some of these strands where they are the most dense, I'm adding some value, making it a little bit darker. Okay, I'm going to add some more of that peachy tone to the bottom of the petals. Let's see what this does. This might be a little strong, but that's all right. There we go. So I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm making sure that it's kind of pointy because there's a lot of detail in here. And now I want to uh, come back to the drawing of the petals. So I'm coming, I'm, I'm taking a uh, stronger yellow mixture. And what I'm going to do now is just to begin to develop some of the carrots a little too dark. Let me lighten that up. I'm going to uh, try to capture some of the character of the, um, of the blossoms themselves. Kind of a wild mop. It's starting to look like our subject. So we're, we're about um, two-thirds of the way there, I'd say. Okay, so we've, we've established our drawing, our light 